Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to crush, humiliate, and totally destroy your competition in your fantasy football draft. It's incredibly simple, so let me just break it down for you. Ultimate Draft Kit. The Ultimate Draft Kit for the fantasy footballers is hands down the best fantasy tool in existence. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's got sleepers, it's got busts, injury updates, full projections. This thing's even got full dynasty rankings. Don't overthink this. It's the only wingman you'll need this year. Head over to ultimatedraftkit.com and grab your copy right away. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday. July 2nd, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Happy to be with you. Mock draft episode. Should be a good time. How you doing, Jason? Doing great. I think this is a, a really helpful mock because of our locations. Because uh, you I'm know, in every, the studio right now. Yeah. Right, right, right. Because like, you know, because Phoenix, of our Arizona. Locations? Within the draft. We're at the beginning of the round. We're at the end of the round. We're in the middle of the uh, round. No, like I, all the strategies. I understand what you're saying, but have you ever asked anyone, hey, what's your draft location? <laughs> and then they say, oh, I'm at the 106. No, they would They would give me a They'd city. Say, I'm in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. My bad. Uh, Al Borland's here <laughs> on the P's and Q's back oh, in. Man. Deucer's Alley. Papa Josh still employed. Back from... Just, uh, uh, what'd you yeah. do over your vacation, Josh? I know you guys traveled all over the place. Uh, I did absolutely nothing. It yeah. was glorious. Congratulations. So same as at work. Uh, and then we've got uh, the Falcon in the building as well. So um, not on vacation. Worked very hard last week. Really impressed with that guy. Really impressed. Don't say that. Um, what else do we have? We have an announcement to make. Do you, do you have an announcement button over there, Al? Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> I found it for you. Oh, there you man. Go. Uh, we have <laughs> it's so much worse when it comes so late. <laughs> it's like, I just imagine the guy found the trumpet. Yeah, he's been looking <laughs> under the chair just for the trumpet. Couldn't get the lock open yeah, on, on get the it case. Out. Um, we mentioned it last Thursday. We had five spots in the Scotty Fish Bowl to give away. And those went to random winners. Anybody that purchased the UDK, UDK Plus before... Uh, yesterday. So the winners, you guys want to uh, announce the winners? Jason, why don't you do it? Sure. We've got Kenton O. That's pro You probably know who you are. That's a rare name. Charles H. Uh, less likely. Andrew W. Anthony N. And Austin M. And, you, uh, and we're emailing you yes. as well. Everyone. You know, this isn't a guess and email <laughs> us type of a situation. We sent the emails out. So you already know. It'd be so much better if we just said the name with one letter of a last name and then just said, come get your ticket. And it's like in the lobby. Right. Come on down. Like come on. Yeah, right you have style. to come pick it up, and then it's all yours. No, you have uh, all won spots to the Scotty Fishbowl. We'll be playing in that, and it'll be a lot of fun. So congratulations. Also, big announcement because uh, this is the first July episode. A couple things happen in July. Number one, three shows a week. That is correct. Except this week. <laughs> well, right. because Thursday is well, the 4th of July. I'll be American on that day. You'll be, wait, were you saying you're Murrican? Yeah, I, was, I made it a verb. Like Murrican? No, Murrican. That's what he's doing yeah. on the 4th. Yeah. Do the, uh, did you pick up any fireworks or anything? I have some, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I the, already The have. booths, the fireworks tents are everywhere. Yes, which, you know, we have we have a good time, but hey. Pro move, guys. I've had these since New Year's Eve when they were closing down, and it's a BOGO. You go in there, you get your fireworks, and they're like- bragging about clearance fireworks? I think yeah. he's bragging about yeah. really old fireworks. I was going to say, I think that you take a, a certain <laughs> really risk. Really old fireworks? I think you take a yeah. risk when you get some ancient fireworks. Yeah. These, 
<laughs> These the are fuses might not work. Then you start creeping up to it, and you go, wait, hey, maybe. If they don't, then then even better. Then we'll just shut it down early. <laughs> okay, you're old. <laughs> um, so three shows a week in July, five shows a week starting in August, all the way through the end of the fantasy football and NFL seasons. And um, the draft analyzer also comes out on July 1st, which is the – uh, last release of the UDK Plus, worth noting, it's the ability to import your team or manually import your team and get a grade from us. Yeah, it's live now. It's fun. If you've got a dynasty roster, you could throw that in there. If you've completed any drafts, if you do mock drafts like we're doing here today, and you want to you know, put your team in there by hand, you could you could get a grade and see like- what, We should do that. What do we think about- We should do this mock this draft. mock, we and, should all put our teams in okay. and then um, figure out which one hand, of you two gets second or third. You're going to be able to handle that? Yeah, I'll be able to handle okay. that. Is that because you got it the probably, one-on-one? It probably your changes location your is, whole... Your location is the, is the <laughs> My first My draft pick? location, yeah. <laughs> Feeling insecure already at pick six, Jason? Nah. Uh, so the draft analyzer available Am now. Am I allowed to move? Like, your draft I, location? Yeah. I'd like to move it up. No. No, no? you're locked. Okay. Uh, so mock draft today, ultimatedraftkit.com for the draft analyzer and the entire draft kit, which we've been, I saw Jason, you were in your, your rankings earlier this morning, making some tweaks every day, obviously moving all of your dynasty players up a little bit in your, project whoever's on my roster, in right. your projections. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, you know, my team looks good on the draft analyzer. Uh, what else is going on? I don't think, I think that's it, right? Nothing that's else, it. Al. All right. Uh, we have a quick question today. I didn't realize that. Andrew wrote in. He said, what does your day-to-day -day look like as content creators for fantasy football? So uh, this is like uh, an AMA-style question. Yeah, this. I mean, look, the, uh, you know, we've done this full-time for a decade. We're, we're business owners and, and you know, running everything. So our day-to-day -day looks different. I mean, there's certainly a ton from when it comes to, to the day. from the content creation um, that is always, always, you know, reading the news, reading beat reporters, watching – uh, video and film and, and uh, trying to read articles, whether it's on y insights and new things that are happening around the league or, or whether it's on, you know, actual fantasy football strategy, making sure that, you know, everything is, is sharp. But sometimes we're working on products and, and, you know, making tools for ourselves primarily that we then roll out to the Foot Clan because we're like, you know, we want to win. And so we're trying to make, you know, things the best we can. Like right now, we've been working a lot on the draft analyzer. Yeah, certainly. And uh, some more features coming to the UDK in general. Um, we want to improve kind of the whole process of using the apps and the website together for 2024. So we're doing a lot of development. This is like development cycle along with the projections and then preparing for the season, which, you know, the content writes itself as content creators when the ball is kicked off in September. And even when you get some preseason, the injury reports, stuff like that. This time of year, though, you know, it's a lot of projection, right? It's a lot of looking forward uh, predictions about, you know, your this is my guy's season and uh, ranking season. So um, a lot of variability with the content creation throughout the year, and we've got a great team helping us out with that. Uh, there was one piece of news, not a lot of news, but, well, one or two pieces that I want to talk about real quick. C.D. Lamb says he's not expecting to report hey. to training camp without a new contract. I like that it's he's not expecting. Uh, the way that you phrased it was very fun. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess it would be the Dallas Morning News' yes. Calvin Watkins reporting that C.D. Lamb is not expected to report. It was very Deion Sanders. I think C.D. would, would have called Calvin Watkins <laughs> and said, I'm not planning on reporting. So pay me. This is not out of nowhere. But this sucks. I mean, like, it should get resolved pretty quick just because of the way of the way that holdouts work now, the amount of money that people are fined. But you never want your superstar players a level of this unhappy where they're saying, like, I'm not even going to show up to work. And Dallas, specifically with CD and Dak Prescott, they have some budgetary things to figure out. I, I, I feel like they are so old school in their approach to contracts. They, they just feel wrong in, in, you know, they're, they're too late on paying everyone and it costs them extra money. They need to get ahead of the game here. And, and you know, do you have any worries? Let's say, let's say lamb holds out this for is... all of training camp or something. Would you worry about fat Thor the way you did last year with Josh Jacobs? 
not, this is a hundred percent perfect timing for posturing. I mean, training camp doesn't start until what? July 25th. Something like that. Yeah. You got three weeks to put this out there that I'm not going to show up. And you've got precedent set by Justin Jefferson's contract this off season. We had what AJ Brown got paid. Oh, um, Ross St. Brown. Um, Ross, I mean, Devontae we, Smith. I I'm willing to stone cold lock that we're talking about a deal for CD lamb before training camp. Starts. Yeah, that's probably true. And the best situation is paid CD lamb for players. Uh, it isn't, you know, this current situation. So hopefully he gets paid. Uh, it has been a little bit odd, but they normally get these things done. Jacoby Brissett right now, according to the athletics, Chad Graff is the Patriots starting quarterback. It, I am – go ahead, Jay. You you I, comment on that, but I have a thought on the Patriots in general. I was just going to say it's it's worth noting for whatever league you're in, especially if you're in a super flex or if you're in a dynasty league, Jacoby Brissett and Sam Darnold are the starters. And they're cast-offs, they're, you know, veteran has-beens that, you know, will be replaced by their incoming rookies. But I would be blown away if week one those two guys are not the starters. Yes. Well, shout out to a really old drop there yeah. for Jacoby. I think that New England is going to surprise people this year. That is what I believe. I think Jacoby Brissett is a pretty good quarterback. They had nobody at the position last year at all. And yeah, quarterback? At quarterback. I, I genuinely think – I think the – here's my prediction. I think eight weeks into the season, the Patriots are 500 or better. Okay. That's my prediction. And they're predicted, I think, by the books to be like the worst team in football. They are. So that that's my surprise turnaround team this year in a very tough division. I think the Patriots will be a much better football team. For fantasy purposes, uh, I would say just worth noting of we, we've seen Jacoby be a, a full-time starter – Basically, two years. You had 2017 where he got uh, he moved over to the Colts and he was their starter for 15 games, but it was 3,100 passing yards, 13 touchdowns. Then you had a, uh, two seasons after that where he was the starter for the vast majority again, and that was 2,900 yards and 18 touchdowns. So I mean, like the offensively for for the for fantasy purposes, they could be they could end up being like a a gritty team that they just grind out some wins, but you know, there's not, there's, there's not a lot of goodness to be found here. All at, right. At and, least elite. You know, they, some talk about Jalen Polk making an immediate impact on the roster as well, yeah. which Mike and I both really like Jalen Polk. Yeah. But that was hot off the heels of a report that, that KJ Osborne is clearly the number one and that Douglas is the two and Polk is the three. So We'll see. It's messy up there. It's super messy. I mean, it's not like Javon Baker's even practicing. So that's another name that gets into the mix. And yeah, any thoughts there on New England, Jason? I don't think that they will surprise me. Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a lot of great assets here in the receiving game. You've got Ramondre, who could be a fantasy asset. And then I will be very surprised if one of these 20 wide receivers actually is a weekly starter in fantasy. I'll, be, I, I'll go so far as to say I'll be shocked. Demario Douglas, correct. So a weekly starter being top thirty six. Yeah, some something like that. Okay, uh, let's get it going. The fantasy footballers mock draft. Well, Jason uh, talked about our locations earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm at one hundred and one, so the first pick. Jason's at the one hundred and six, and Mike has the twelfth pick in the draft. So he's the caboose. No comments, Mike. Can, can you handle Jason today? He is. He's something. Yeah. He's in an elite form. <laughs> um, Mike and I will have the experience of dealing with the turn and back-to-back -back picks. Jason will be right smack dab in the middle. It won't be a fantasy footballer's mock draft if all his hopes and dreams of who will drop to him doesn't, you know, if they do come true, I guess it won't be a – a normal mock, but this is a uh, 12 team, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receiver, one tight end, one flex, four bench, uh, looking at half PPR scoring for today's mock draft. And uh, I have the first pick and I believe our last mock draft, we did a full PPR three wide receiver. Is that correct? Was that I the mayhem know. draft? Mike, were you, I don't know, were you here for that? Um, if this was a three, like the pick is going to be Christian McCaffrey. 
What? <laughs> but if it was a three wide receiver draft and it was PPR, would that change your mind at all? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm going to go Christian McCaffrey at 101, but Lamb, Hill, Jefferson, and Brees Hall, they go two through five. Jason on the clock at 106. I thought this would be an, an extremely easy pick because I, I've kind of got a clear top six and I'm at the 106. However, Brees Hall and Justin Jefferson snuck into that. So I, I've got a good decision here between Bijan, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Jamar Chase. Uh, love all three of those guys. Would be happy with any of them. I still believe Jamar Chase is as elite as ever. He's tied to Burrow. I think the situation with Tyler Boyd being gone, uh, Jamar Chase could very easily outproduce CD Lamb, Tyreek Hill this year. That's how I've got him. That's how I see him. So I'll, I'll take Jamar Chase. Start off with the wide receiver. Okay, that means you passed on Bijan, who, you know, I know that's tough for you. I'm on Raw. It is. Good. Wait, could I have had both? Uh, no, I was just continuing wow. down the first round. Uh, A.J. Brown at 109. Goodness. Jameer Gibbs at 110. And Jonathan Taylor at 111. So, Mike, you're going to have back-to-back -back picks here at the end of the first, top of the second, which you take a second and think about it, and we'll take a quick break. All right. All right. Just to recap, Mike is on the clock first round so far I went McCaffrey at 101 then Lamb Hill Jefferson Brees Hall Jamar Chase B. John Robinson Chase was to Jason at six Amon Ra went 108 then A.J. Brown then Gibbs and Taylor at 110 111 I don't know if was there anybody in that group Mike you were kind of hoping would sneak through to give you um not I mean a better selection here I, I don't think so because it was I I, I had no idea who was going to drop to me at the 12 and I guess you know, if those running backs were factoring it, it would be hard or harder. Like, to uh, I'm at the edge here. Like if Gibbs was there, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. It's just going for that upside that he can give you. But I know Kyron is one of my picks. Like that, I know for sure. And then it would be deciding between Travis Etienne. So start very high T, which I don't love to do. But again, it's a mock, so we get to find out at the end if I. You'd be waiting like 22 more picks, right? Yeah, it, because the the wide receivers that you're looking at here, I mean. Do you feel like you're having to say that they're better than they are to yes. take them at one? Well, it, and it's almost like like I would like to get Puka here, but, it, man. <laughs> just doing just, the Puka, yeah, Kyron. Going with the Rams stack at the, at well, the turn me, here feels, I, I just, I don't really want to do that. Let me ask you a question, though, because I've seen, you know, obviously rankings, different places, different thoughts. One of the decisions I had to make this offseason in Dynasty, or sorry, in our League of Record, was the Saquon Kyron decision. Yeah. It's one you have to make here. Uh, you know, does that type of having to go Rams, Rams, or going, you know, Saquon and Puka, do, is that in consideration? Is the gap? It's the, the, the gap to me, I'm all in on Kyron. Like, I believe that it will be, it maybe not as, as great as last year because the Rams were you know, a pretty strong offense, but I think the utilization will be, it's going to be Kyron Williams and Blake Quorum is brought in to be a guy who gives Kyron a break every once in a while. But I think that he is still the engine. So I'm going to take Kyron. And then it's it, like I was saying about the wide receivers is it's Garrett Wilson or Marvin Harrison for me. Both have, you know, pretty glaring issues of Marvin Harrison He's never played a snap of football, and taking a rookie wide receiver at the 201, it carries a lot of risk. We've This is uncharted territory. And Garrett Wilson of, is is Aaron Rodgers really going to be Aaron Rodgers? It, and it's really fragile. If if Rodgers misses time, you're, you're going to feel like you're up a creek yet again. Uh, so I what I have not done, though, is – like my rankings definitely have Garrett Wilson higher, but I'm going to take Marvin Harrison just because I want to see what it what it feels like, what my team looks like at the end here, leading with a rookie. Well, it's, it's a more comfortable place to be if you got to wait 22 picks to have it split running back wide receiver. Well, I'm saying between Marv and Garrett Wilson. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you view? I mean, the stuff you said about Garrett Wilson with Aaron Rodgers. Do you do either of you guys 
think the exact same way about Drake London with with Kirk Cousins. That and is, yeah, oh, it's both, super both guys coming back from the the Achilles injury. I just mean it seems like the narrative around Garrett Wilson is one hundred percent about the health of Aaron Rodgers. I don't feel like I hear that as much about Drake London. Uh, I I think it's identical. I mean, the situation, the the difference is we've seen a little bit more from Garrett Wilson than we have from Drake London. You know, the the target volume that he's had yeah. over the couple of years. But it's a complete shift in systems in Atlanta. So I, I expect the target volume to go up for Drake London as well. And and both these teams, I mean, they, they've got the Achilles quarterbacks, but they both upgraded their, their backup quarterback, which is sadly important. See, Kirk Cousins is somebody who actually changed his location. Yes, just his draft for, location just so you moved. Know. Harrison to Mike at 201. Then Garrett Wilson did go next. Puka Nakua, so three wide outs to start round two. Saquon Barkley at 204. Sam Laporta at 205. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, we're going to see that. We're going to see it. And then Devontae Adams at 206. So, Mike, you're reacting to uh, – I just don't – I, I don't. mean, look, if Laporta catches 13 touchdowns, this pick will be worth it. Yes. But but that's – If he's th the that's next – That's the thing. If is, he's the next Gronk, you'll be like, ah, oh, he's a first-rounder next year. Yeah. But that's that's a really lofty goal. I know, you know, as a, as a rookie, to do what he did, that's also uncharted territory. I'm just saying the – the the way that it can go wrong for Sam Laporta right there is it feels there it feels like there's far more options and roads that lead to disappointment. Not arguing with you, just arguing with you. Yeah, I believe his um, expected <laughs> touchdowns last year were closer to six, six and a half than the double digits that he received. So him be taking that leap what, up to thirteen would be surprising to me. Sure. Yeah, I I'd be very curious on a historical analysis of the expected touchdowns for Rob Gonkowski. For his career. You know what I mean? Like certain right. players are going to yeah. outperform the mean. Um, Jason, you have Jamar Chase in the first round. With what you see on the board right now, what are your thoughts on um, the landscape, the picks available, and whether you regret not going running back in no, the first round? No, I, I I don't regret it. I mean, it was between Bijan and Jamar Chase in the first round, and now in the second round, I'm between Drake London, who we've been talking about, and Travis Etienne. Um, both of those guys are top 10 in my personal rankings. I'm happy with either. Part of me wants to like experiment with Drake London because I haven't taken him, and I'm even though I do expect him to be good, I also avoid risk a lot of times in these first two rounds. And there, there's a lot more you know variables with him where I I see myself in real drafts probably bypassing him where he's going. Either way, Travis Etienne's my running back six. I don't have a running back from the first round. I'm not going to let him pass me by. <laughs> Uh, you are the highest right now on ETN. That's <laughs> it. I I don't know what's happening. Oh. Today. Uh, ETN at six. Uh, I've got him at seven. Jason or I have Mike eight. at eight. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, there's been some really negative reports about Tank Bigsby again. They did not spend picks in the draft to, you know, for all of the coach speak around ETN's workload, and the coach speak about Tank Bigsby's offseason last year turning into nothing, and then his and then talking about Bigsby looking even worse this offseason. This is this is Travis Etienne's job right yeah. now. And when push comes to shove to win a ball game, you think they're going to throw Tank Bigsby out there? I don't feel that way right now. I I 100% believe that they want – like they don't want to use Etienne like that, but it comes down to can they actually put Tank Bigsby on the football field because that dude was a liability. All right, I almost forgot that I have – picks in this draft it's been that long <laughs> since i made a selection uh etn went to jason then london olave Ayuk, and a chan leading into uh two selections and this is interesting uh, i don't think we've done a mock where i've been at the 101 i haven't kind of seen the landscape at this point feels a little bit strange if i'm honest uh i've got a long long wait just like mike did with 22 picks between these two selections and my next two selections, it it's tough. It's brutal, man. You get put in that position where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm probably not going to take a quarterback here. Um, but that also means I'm kind of punting the position uh, with the fourth and fifth round not really being a likely spot for me. You've got some question marks with like Diggs and Josh Jacobs sitting here on the board. You've got Derrick Henry. Uh, that's interesting to me. Um, he has definitely climbed up a little bit in my board over the last couple weeks. Good for you. 
but not like wildly. I mean, I'm still the lowest of the three of us. But all the big names at the position are kind of gone. Rashad White is there. It'd be quite the PPR tandem between Christian McCaffrey and Rashad White. And then at the wide receiver position, you know, Nico Collins is interesting on the board here. I don't, I have not taken Stephon Diggs, and I cannot imagine taking Stephon Diggs here. So I think I'm going to lock in. Um, I think I'm going to take, oof. <laughs> this is tough. Being at the turn is tough. Uh, I'm going to take Rashad White for my first pick. Is that who you just went, I think I'm going to take, and then went oof, or was well, that a different player? That would be the appropriate response to drafting Rashad White. The oof, uh, the oof was that I was about to click two running backs. Ah. And then I oofed my way into thinking of what my wide receiver one would look like at pick 412 and 501. Um, one way to find out. <laughs> dude, your your testosterone will be off the charts. This is brutal. It's really fun <laughs> drafting Christian McCaffrey. It's a lot tougher making these picks in this round. So um, I find when I go McCaffrey, I more often go hero RB where – I'm utilizing McCaffrey as yeah, but I don't love. The, I don't have like a above the rest pick here at wide receiver. I'm gonna go with Jalen Waddle, my highest ranked wide no! receiver on the board. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna take Jalen Waddle here. I'm just going with my rankings. Um, but he's so low in the ADP. And he was <laughs> supposed to drop to me. He he was a little bit lower in the ADP, but that's that's the player I'm gonna go well, with here. Gosh darn it! <laughs> um, you had a long wait, so he he. Like where he was in the ADP. He was far I, down, yeah. I was like, this is this is easy. Because, yes, Jalen Waddle is Jalen Waddle is going to have a bounce back. I know you year. are really bullish yes. on Jalen Waddle. Yeah, you're going to end up, I mean, Mike and I are going to put this on display for you during this draft. You're going to end up reaching ADP-wise on players when you're at the turn. You're just not going to have the luxury of, like, this is there's no gamble like before when you're at a, you know, you're picking 10. And it's going to come back quickly in the second round, and you can make that little uh, end around gamble. I don't have that choice, and so Waddle kind of started a run on some wideouts here. Evans, Collins, and Diggs go next. Derrick Henry at three hundred five. That was a consideration, but uh, Jason, you are back on the clock chasing ETN. Feel like you know that's a very comfortable first two picks. Yeah, it'll, it lets me go in any direction. I I feel like looking at the drafts I've enjoyed leaving. This season, I really want one of those top five tight ends, but I want like the last one. I don't, I don't care whether I get Kelsey or McBride or Andrews or Dalton Kincaid, you know, that's left. But I want one of them. So if I, if I believe that, that means my next pick is probably going to be whoever is left over. If there's one of those there at the four oh seven, and so you kind of want to think ahead when you're, you know, I, so I'm not going to go with a quarterback here if. You know, and and then all of a sudden I've got one running back, one wide receiver going, you know, into the fifth round. So now I'm looking at wide receiver and running back. I think this is a great spot for Josh Jacobs if you believe in him. I don't, but I totally see the the avenue for believing in him, and and the the value is good there. Other running backs that are on the board, I am in love with Isaiah Pacheco. I believe that he is going to have a great season. He's probably going to be my pick here. And then at wide receiver, I would go to Cooper Cup personally. I still believe in him going forward. There are higher ranked guys uh, like Debo Samuel, DJ Moore, Michael Pittman ahead of him. I, I think when I look at all these players, I want to go with who excites me. And I am excited about Isaiah Pacheco. I believe he is, you know, has a very, very high floor. I think he's going to be the workhorse for a better Chiefs offense this year than last year. And I, I see him as cemented, as safe, with a lot of upside based on that offense, what they can do with Patrick Mahomes. And uh, it's a good time to remind you, when we talk about ADP average draft position, we have a, a, an ADP comparison tool on the website in the Ultimate Draft Kit. It shows where players are going on different platforms. So, um, you know, Pacheco's going higher on ESPN and Yahoo right now than he is on Sleeper. A player like Waddle, big variation between best ball at 208 all the way down to sleepers, uh, kind of the top of the fourth, but then in Yahoo, it's the end of the third. Yeah, I believe it was top, top of, of the third in top, this draft. Top of the fourth. Yeah, but... This is where he was supposed to go. Um, well, I certainly wouldn't have gotten him. There was no way for him to come back to me uh, 22 picks later. So, I'm sorry, Mike. 
but you don't get him. Pacheco to Jason at 306. Then Debo Samuel, Pittman, Josh Allen, Josh Jacobs, DJ Moore, you are on the clock. So the names that I am looking at uh, at this point now, uh, Tank Dell is – Tank Dell is is almost certainly one of these picks. When you take Tank Dell, mm -hmm. do you feel because I know how much you love Nico? Do you feel like you have just like let yourself down that you just got the less than option, mm. the third Texan wide receiver? I would call him the second, but <laughs> uh, I look ADP wise, I get he's the third, but but no, because I I still have Tank Dell in my top fifteen. Do you? Say like when you click the button, do you do you j even just whisper to yourself like "Thank you very much"? Do you say that? Do I say "Thank you, do you very say, much"? Thank you very much. What is when it? you take, take what does that have to do with anything? Well, his name. His no, name I know, but like we were having a good conversation about valuing Texas wide receivers, which I think Tank Dell might be the. I, th I think he might be the most valuable, and that's why I would be like when I take him, well, I'll say Thank "Thanks you. for the information." You're welcome. Uh, and then there's the other <laughs> the other thing. Uh, I just want to make sure get the full thought process here. Uh, I'm still in on Kenneth Walker. I think that the Seattle offense is going to be improved this year, and they're they're, they're at least saying the right things to get me hot and bothered about. We're going to be you know utilizing the run game more. And th then my final uh, decision is: Do I go? I guess you can just call it the uh, how it's known to me is the Jason Moore turn of you take the the Eagles stack here. You go mm. with you go with Jalen Hurts. You go with Devonta Smith. Now, I don't. I probably can't do that because I want Tank Dell. So I'm going to take Tank Dell. Uh, but do I? You could take Stroud. <laughs> I, I could. I. I yeah. Yes. Uh, the the listeners would be very happy to see me take C.J. Stroud right here. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to. I'm going to take Jalen Hurts. I know I don't have the stack, but I'm going to take Jalen Hurst. I'm going to see it. Man, I'm, I'm I'm trying some new things here. We'll, we'll see if it works out. Kyron Harrison, Dell, Hurts, and then Mahomes goes next, then Kelsey McBride back-to-back, -back, then Lamar. Onesie so, run. So literally the last six picks, Hurts, Mahomes, Kelsey McBride, Lamar, Kincaid. And so, it's going to keep rolling. Is it? It is. This is the easiest pick for me. I, I said that I want one of these top five tight ends. Um, and I want the last one. Well, that's exactly what I get. I've got Mark Andrews sitting here as the last of a tier for me. Uh, I'm much happier with my rosters when I leave with I, – I think Laporta, Kincaid, McBride, Kelsey, and Mark Andrews, all five could legitimately finish as the number one tight end. So if I'm getting the one that costs the least in the fourth round, I'm very happy with that. Well, it uh, continued beyond you, too. You took Mark Andrews and then C.J. Stroud went next. So you actually had eight consecutive picks, quarterback or tight end. Neighbors, Cup, and Devontae Smith. Really frustrated right now because Cup and Smith were who I wanted to make it all the way to 412. Oh, that's too they bad. were the two picks directly before me. Uh, wide receivers on the board right now. I love George Pickens. I'm going to have to reach for Pickens because I have the turn and a long wait. Uh, Amari Cooper sitting there, Zay Flowers, uh, who you know we talked about as a bust, or I brought up as a bust potential. Um, at quarterback, Richardson, Burrow, Prescott. Um, I hate drafting at this spot. That's what <laughs> I, I, every mock draft we've done, I've had them locked and loaded. And to this draft, it feels, it feels really, really difficult. Uh, Mixon, James Cook on the board, Camara, And that's with that's with CMC leading the way. So, uh, I, at, I'm going to go wide receiver, wide receiver here. I'm going to take George Pickens. And then I'm going to go with uh, DK Metcalf, a guy Jason really likes. And I'm going to put Waddle, Pickens, and Metcalf back to back to back for my three picks. It's a, it's a little bit of what you said, Jason, going into the hero RB. Rashad White's role is secure. The baseline for Rashad White last year was so solid. And so those two should be able to hold it down outside of injury. And uh, so I'll go Pickens and Metcalf. A little bit of explosive capability here with Waddle and with Pickens. And then with Metcalf's touchdown totals, all three of those guys could win you a week. So we'll mix it up. We'll give it a go. James Cook goes next. Joe Mixon, Zay Flowers, George Kittle, and Jason, you're back on the clock. Chase, ETN, Pacheco, and Andrews. Yeah, I, uh, I'm glad you took DK Metcalf. I feel like I've had him in every single one of my drafts. He's one of the most 
Um, mispriced ADP according to my rankings, my belief. Um, I'm completely with Mike that I am excited to see the Seattle offense. I think they've got a lot of great weapons, and the coordinator shift uh, I think is going to do a lot for them. Did you see the uh, – while you think here, Jason, I want to bring up a tweet by a um, friend of the show, Warren Sharp. Did you, he tweeted out the highest rate of incompletions due to inaccurate passes, mm -hmm. which a lot of the times we, we see the completion percentage numbers or stuff like that, and we're like um, – Make excuses for yeah. quarterbacks Whose in bad situations. Um, and he put it together. The highest rate of incompletions due to inaccurate passes was Deshaun Watson. Makes so, sense. I watched that. Yeah, 43.9% of his incompletions were inaccurate. The I, I mention it because the least was Geno Smith. So yeah. The best. Yes. Uh, Yes, the least amount of inaccuracy right. uh, as the reasoning behind yeah, it. So I, I thought that was interesting. What was also interesting, though, take it for what you will, but like, oh, no, that that that, that adds up. Bryce Young's on the other end of the spectrum. I, I misread that. Yeah, Gino, yeah, Bryce Young is one of the worst. <laughs> Geno Smith played well last year. For fantasy purposes and fantasy players, we really think it was an, an awful down year because the touchdowns weren't there, and the truth is, he was too high on his touchdown rate the year prior. I think the truth is going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, ironically, this it's conversation depth the target though a little bit too. Yes, for because, sure. Because you had like Mahomes down at the at in the Geno range, which you expect Cousins down there, but at the top, like Lamar Jackson, thirty six percent. That was one of the worst. Oh, I remember him air mailing Bateman down that left sideline about fifty times last season. Probably Bateman's fault. Ironically, yeah, run faster. <laughs> Um, ir ironically with this discussion, I'm going to take a guy who uh, was the primary target, is the primary target of the least accurate quarterback on that list, Amari, Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper yeah. when he was playing with that awful Deshaun Watson last year. In those five games that those two started together, he was on pace to be the wide receiver six. You know that there is a ceiling here. He's looked great. He has not aged out. The, the depth chart around him, I'm not afraid of Jerry Judy. This is, you know, he's the leader there. And so to get as my wide receiver two in the fifth round, I'm very happy with that. I really wanted either Cooper or Metcalf. Kind of like drafting at six, I think. <laughs> uh, Kenneth Walker went, Kamara, Keenan, and then we go Kirk, and then we go Kyle Pitts. And Jason, uh, it's Mike's turn to uh, stack somebody with Jalen Hurts here. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to be drafting Goddard if that's what you're – Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> If that's what you're trying to push me into. Uh, so it's uh, – Kyron, Kyron, Harrison, Dell, and Hurt so yeah. far. So the, the tiers have not broken how I would have hoped they would. Uh, but, yeah, man, it's just old man running back situation here. Like, it's James Conner, Aaron Jones, David Montgomery. I guess DeAndre Swift is – Yeah, Ramondre, old. fresh contract sitting there. Mike, this is time to make amends. Uh, I have vocally said things will probably be better for him than I had initially thought, but I don't think they're going to go great, uh, even with him being the, the primary guy. But I imagine you have to take a running back in these yeah, two picks, I, right, because of the weight. Well, I mean, you can load up on some zero RB heroes, uh, like you know, like Zamir White and Zach Moss. Those types of, of guys will probably be around. In my next pick, Jerome Ford. Those types. Uh, but I would, I just can't get away from James Conner. Like statistically speaking, I really want to move on this year, but he's still in my top 15. Uh, coach Gannon was just talking about Very positive, Jonathan yeah. or not John of James Conner, you know, speaking of like, yeah, I know he's older for running back, but he's going to be the guy. So I'm taking him and then this is uh, as my wide receiver three. I'm good with this. This is going to be T. Higgins. It's going to be oh. T. Higgins. I I love <laughs> T. Higgins here. He is as, not in the sixth as my three. We are appropriately pricing in the risk. Yeah, I mean, I I I would have considered him last round with Amari Cooper, but I I took Jamar Chase. So it's I, nice getting about 900 yards receiving in the sixth round. There, I mean, <laughs> that is a steal. Uh. T. Higgins is, is better than the way you besmirch him. He's he's a good <laughs> wide receiver. I think he'll have a really solid it's season. It's just been in a, a while year. since we've 
Yeah, I felt mean, it. no, I like that besmirching is just stating his like yardage totals. But whatever. Uh, Addison, Aaron Jones, Roma Dunze, McLaurin, Montgomery go next. Jason, you're on the clock. So here I am. I, uh, I've i got my tight end locked down, so I'm always going to every round, I'm going to check the other onesie position and just say, like, what's the lay of the land in quarterbacks? Do I need to look yet? Do I not? I've got Jamar Chase, so Burrow is a guy I don't usually draft because he's a pocket quarterback, but he is there for the stack. And then there's three pocket quarterbacks left. There's, or I'm sorry, mobile quarterbacks left. There's Anthony Richardson, who I'd need to take right now if I want to get him. Kyler Murray. Wait, like, Richardson's still there? Richardson is wow. still there in the sixth. He's usually going in the fifth. You've got Kyler Murray, um, a great value, and then Jaden Daniels. I'm, I'm always targeting those three guys. Since I've got two running backs, I've got two wide receivers, because of the slip for Anthony Richardson, I am going to take him here. I don't feel like you would have done that if you hadn't reacted the way you did. I think he would have. He would have figured it out. Uh, Richardson at 607 to Jason. Uh, that would be delightful. Godwin, Ramondre, who I, again, another player I thought might sneak all the way to me, and then Burrow. Uh, so two more quarterbacks go off the board. I had my eyes on Richardson or Kyler Murray with one of my two picks here at the turn. I'll let you know who it is in a minute. Oh, the suspense. So is it going to be Richardson or Kyler? Yeah, it's Kyler. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, oh, I, I was going to say. Because Richardson's gone. You yeah. like don't gamble with Kyler. He's he never he never makes it back. Oh yeah, from experience. Yeah, yes. no, there was no chance. I uh, I was curious to see if any quarterbacks were going to go in the sixth round at all. Jason broke the ice. Sitting here at seven oh one, DeAndre Swift, a starter in Chicago, still available. Mostert, last year's running back two, still available. Uh, and then some of those names that you mentioned, Mike, that are going to fall. The, the Zamir White and look, Najee's on the board. Yeah. Um as a as a running back three, there's some reliability there. And at wide receiver, you you've got some oh, I just gotta do what I always do. I'm taking Calvin Ridley at seven oh one. Calvin Ridley is go I'm not going oh, to mock man. draft without getting him. Apparently. I'm gonna i I'm gonna bang the drum for Calvin Ridley all off season long. Um and you whether, are the reason whether that buries ADP. me or not. You're the yeah. reason his ADP stays where it is because you take him every time in the mock drafts. Um, all right, so here I am. Uh, a lot of the same exact names. Um, Swift is gone, Worthy, Dak, and Rashi Rice. Exactly. So those are four guys. Andy, you were just talking about who you liked, and those four players that went from after you picked, I don't want any of them. Um, I'm not really into Rice or Xavier Worthy right now. I've got a quarterback, and DeAndre Swift's okay, but there are other running backs I would prefer. So it's similar names to what you were just talking about. Najee Harris, Raheem Mostert. Even Zamir White sitting there if I'm looking at running back. Since I've only got two running backs, two wide receivers, um, Jamar Chase and Amari Cooper, I would rather go with a wide receiver here. <sighs> the wide receiver I want has a lower ADP than the running back that I want. So I'm going to play the game and see if I can get the get the guy that I want at wide receiver in the next round. There's a lot of not names well, that I you're saying right I there. Mike's, Mike's Why don't you there. just tell us who you want to draft? I mean, you should probably inform the audience, I'm thinking. I will inform them when he is selected <laughs> or when I select him. Um, so, I'm look, I, this is not a sexy fun pick, but Najee Harris gets yeah. a lot of work. He's been, you know, he's going to be a, a, a top 20 running back for sure. And to get him in the seventh round as my running back three is just a nice, solid depth piece. Don't disagree with any of that. However, you are now the team with Najee Harris, just so you know. Yeah, that is the problem of selecting him. Yeah, Jordan Love goes next, and Mostert, product. Chubb, Caleb Williams, Zamir White. Mike, you're on the clock. Mm -hmm. Two picks. Uh, you have your quarterback. You will need a tight end over the next five. But uh, 7-12 and 8-01. Was really hoping that Mostert or Zamir White would – have made it to the turn. Unfortunately, that is not what has happened. So uh, at the top of the ADP board here, Javante Williams, which, goodness gracious, my bets against Javante Williams just continually, <laughs> they're stacking on top of each other. So I just, yeah, I don't know that I can take him. Austin Eckler, Jonathan Brooks, Jalen Warren, Zach. I, look, if I'm going to take a running back, Zach Moss is going to be a part of it. So then let me go look at the wide receivers. ADP wise, you're talking Jaden Reed, Hollywood Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, Lad McConkey, who just got 
himself uh was it herbert was talking about him you shared a, a I little think there, no there was just a report of him picking up the offense easily yeah so uh, lad mcconkey's an interesting rookie or it's we are in rookie territory where you're going to want to start loading up here in the seventh and the eighth of these first round draft picks that their adp is not marvin harrison high although marvin harrison is on my team uh, i'm going to take zach moss and then at the wide receiver position, man, this this is just a, a tier of players that I don't have the excitement. I don't have true excitement. Like Hopkins and Deontay Johnson and Hollywood yeah. Brown and Ugh. Curtis Brother, Samuel yeah. and J.S.N. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind Christian of... Christian Watson. <laughs> that was like a reason like, they're going in the eighth. Sounds like you should take Evan Ingram, your man, at the tight end position in the eighth. What, uh, why well, I'm is, sorry, Andy's man. Hold I mean, on, hold yeah, on. Why my, is that, my, Jason? He's my guy. I really like him. Why, um, why should I do that? Well, I think that you should do that because you don't like any of the wide receivers. Uh -huh. You need a tight end, and you've always loved Evan Ingram. That was. Oh, yeah. Who are you waiting to come back to you? Oh, well, TBD. <laughs> it's probably Evan Ingram, man. Yeah. For your second tight end. Yeah. So, uh, the, for my tight end strategy, it was, do I take Evan Ingram here, or do I wait for Jake Ferguson because I am I am perfectly happy leaving a draft with Jake Ferguson in the whatever the ninth or the tenth. Uh I am going to who are my wide receivers? So I got Marv, I got Tank, I got T. Higgins. Wide receiver four. Uh this is sorry man, it's it's rough on the edge. You yeah, know, Jaden I'm, Reed's I'm gonna the take pit. Jaden Reed. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not him. I, I wanted Lad McConkey, but he I went, figured he went right afterwards. I, I'm a big, I, I'm a believer that You're Lad. A big lad. I'm a big lad, <laughs> um, and I, I, I do believe that he is going to be someone. Uh, you know, that rookie season is extremely. He's the number one wide receiver for Justin Herbert. That's how I have it statted. That's my belief that happens in his rookie season. Um, maybe that's not the case, but when you are in the eighth round, you could take those gambles. McConkey, Hollywood. Jonathan Brooks, Javante Williams, and DeAndre Hopkins off the board. Jason gets to add to his roster at 807. Thankfully, there there were two wide receivers that I really wanted. One of them did make it back to me. We have spoke kindly of Geno Smith, of the Seahawks offense. I know it was a disappointing rookie season, but Jackson Smith and the Jigbo is supposed Man. to be a superstar wide receiver going into his second season. He is playing the role that is so good coming from that Washington offense I, I, you know, what, how they utilized him, the role that he was in his rookie season, I think was part of the problem. He had so, his average depth of target might as well been like, you know, a foot. It was so putrid. And so I believe that this new coordinator coming in with the system he's bringing will fit him a lot. All the reports have been glowing about him. So I, I, I've been, I've been happy getting JSN um, late in a lot of drafts. Brian Thomas goes next, and then three tight ends: Bowers, Ferguson, Ingram. Which means I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump on the very back of this run with a guy that I believe in, in David Njoku, and then I'm going to swing back around and solidify Whoops. my wide receiver room. <laughs> yeah. Or sorry, my running back room. Uh, I'm going to take. I tried to help you out, Mike. Yeah, you did. I'm going to take uh, Jalen Warren here, two rounds after Najee Harris, the more productive back on a per touch basis than Najee last year. Warren's going to benefit from the same offensive line improvements that Najee would benefit from, and the future of Najee Harris is unlikely to be with this team. So um, I think Warren is a sneaky pick late in the draft. Tua goes next, then Watson, Eckler, Deontay, and back to Jason. We have three picks left, gentlemen. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty balanced. I've got my quarterback. I've got my tight end. I'm looking at running back or wide receiver, the names that are – out there at wide receiver, you could take the shot on Jamison Williams, hope that he's going to finally uh, have an NFL career. Um, you could go uh, deeper with other Packers. There's there's not a lot that I like, unless you want to try a rookie like Keon Coleman. Um, but there are other rookies that I prefer, even at running back. So Trey Benson, is he was my number one running back coming into the season. Um, I, I, I agree with everything Mike said, but when – an injury happens to someone who has never played a full season in his career. Yeah. Trey Benson should dominate. So I'm looking at my team and you can, you, this is where it's like, do I want a backup who could be a league winner, Trey Benson, you know, an injury ahead of him, or do I need depth and someone like Devin Singletary, who's just a starter like Devin Singletary more likely has more fantasy points at the end of the season than Trey Benson. 
but also probably doesn't get in my lineup very often and doesn't help me. Trey Benson wins a league for me if he gets that opportunity. So I'm going to take Trey Benson, Arizona Cardinals rookie running back. Hawkinson, Purdy, Coleman, Goff, Goddard, and Mike, you didn't even get Goddard. You didn't even get your you, chance you to stack stacked. it. So you got from, Goddard. Dude. So when you thought about <laughs> tight end, there were six tight ends that went after you yeah. made that decision. Uh, I'll be Which is a lot. To be transparent, I did not see that tight end run uh, happening there at the at the end of the eighth round. Don't worry, the senator's still there, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, but so that, that look, the tight end position. We are at a complete punt now. So it's do you go with the doctor, just chase the Houston Texans offense, uh, hope that the Muth can get Luth, or then you're looking at, you know, we we added Noah Fant into the UDK, right? Mm -hmm. I think we added him yeah, as, a a, as, as a sleeper up there in Minnesota. A lot of things make sense for him. Did you mean Seattle? Yeah, what did I say? You, you said, said Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, Seattle. Uh, a lot of things make sense for him of letting other tight ends go, bringing him back for a a good amount of money. Um, and then there's also just oh, – it's very off-brand, but the reports of Taysom Hill working with the running back room and the chance that he is heavily featured on the goal line, I think is a it's a pretty interesting situation. Regardless, like I don't have to – I don't have to take my tight end here, do I, guys? You don't have to. You can, <laughs> can see what you can see what happens when the doctor goes and the muth goes, and then you will end up with the senator. Yeah, no, that's I'm gonna I'm gonna take Dalton Schultz. Uh, we're we're gonna avoid a full catastrophe, and then I have I have said it that look, if I have Kyron Williams on my team, Blake Corum is a must draft at the end. He, Blake Corum's on the top of my list of guys I really want to draft regardless. But if I have Kyron, I hate the fact that I have to carry an insurance running back, but I believe should Kyron miss time, Blake Corum goes – he gets plugged right in and he gives me a good percentage of Kyron's production. All right. Uh, Brian Robinson and Devin Singletary went uh, after that. Jason, you're back on the clock. Adonai Mitchell off the board as well. Two picks left. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You've so, got your onesies already. There's a, a, a rookie wide receiver that I think will come to the next round because this is a player that's mostly undrafted. I expect him to be my final pick, but this, my second to last pick, because I know I'm going with the more unproven hopeful, I want to go with like a veteran wide receiver who can just plug in an important role. So I'm asking you two guys, between Curtis Samuel and Joshua Palmer, I think both guys are, have important roles to play with good quarterbacks. Um, which one would you guys prefer? I would take Curtis. I'd probably take the shot on Curtis be because I, they're both veterans. But, Palmer it is. But, <laughs> wi but which one has a shot at like staying on your roster before we by week two? Sure. They they gave money to Curtis Samuel to bring him in. It's funny how high Keon Coleman goes in drafts and Curtis Samuel's left for dead. Curtis Samuel, I have statted out as the wide receiver one for Buffalo, so I will take him and add him to the roster. All right, I will close things out. Yeah, adding Gus Bus to the roster. Yeah, it, if Gus Edwards is seriously going in the tenth, like of home league drafts, that's outrageous. If you're taking Gus Edwards on on your mock draft, and you don't play the Gus Bus, <laughs> I am. You know, I don't even know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I. the The last spot's tough for me because. I feel like my wide receivers, I've got big names, Waddle, Pickens, Metcalf, Ridley. And so taking a flyer on, you know, aforementioned Palmer or like Rashid Shahid is at the top of my wide receiver list. Like he's going to be a starter, explosive, great opportunity. Or you could just take a, another starter in Zeke. But then going Gus and Zeke back to back, that just feels <laughs> old. feels like old and yeah. dirty. Enjoy the floor. Um, It's disgusting. Yeah, it's gross. Uh. Shahid or Ligat? Who would you take if you were me? Uh, Ligat. Jason would 
Oh, I, th- I thought Leggett was the one you were going to be trying to get in here in the middle of the... I'll take uh, Rashid Jaheed. I made the decision. Leggett is definitely in consideration. I, I, I love the talent of the player. He was one of those guys that we said, if you if you weren't with us during the draft season, this is a, I don't know, a 17th year breakout, uh, played played for college, <laughs> has, has to have three or four degrees, um, played forever and finally was great, but I believe in him. I really do. I think he's talented. The problem was that he went to Bryce Young, and I don't believe in him. So I'm actually going to go with Roman Wilson. Uh, Roman Wilson has an opportunity here to clearly be the second player. He's the second best wide receiver on the team. And, you know, the Steelers, they just have a history of getting great wide receivers in the draft that are productive. They do, but they also have a history of their rookie wide receivers are – takes them some time. Well, that's my last pick, so okay. I'm not too worried. And like with Arthur Smith, <clears throat> excuse me, coming over, if he brings his uh, two wide receiver sets, I think it's gonna it's gonna be hard for Roman Wilson to carve out a role. Agreed with at, that at least early. Uh, so Roman Wilson then went Jerome Ford, the Muth, Trevor Lawrence, Khalil Shakir, Kirk Cousins, Jerome Ford. I was hoping he would be the one who drops to me. Uh, if we're going to take a flyer here, I'm going to look at the wide receiver. So, Leggett is still there. Uh, other upside guys, like Huge is still there. I'm not going to do, do it. it. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Palmer's there if you want the better wide receiver. Yeah, that's that's fair. I'm going to take uh, Kendra Miller. All right, Kendra Miller with the final pick of the draft. Is that embarrassing for Kendra to not even be like a like a waiver wire prize next week? No, 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 he got always, drafted. Yeah, you want to be drafted. You don't want to be the Brock in... Purdy of this draft. Exactly, Mister Relevant. All right, uh, interesting one, Mike and I on the opposite ends of uh, the draft. I went with McCaffrey, so he was the linchpin of the entire roster. McCaffrey, White, Warren, and Edwards, my only running backs. Waddle, Pickens, Metcalf, Ridley, and Shahid, my wideouts with Kyler Murray and D- David Njoku. I started at wide receiver with Jamar Chase and paired him with Amari Cooper, Jackson Smith, Najigba, uh, Curtis Samuel, and Roman Wilson. At running back, I've got Travis Etienne, Isaiah Pacheco, Najee Harris, and Trey Benson. And then I have the combo at my onesies, Anthony Richardson at quarterback and Mark Andrews, two slightly more early uh, picks at the onesie position for me. I got Marvin Harrison, so – Pants are unnecessary. Tank Dell, <laughs> T. Higgins, Jaden Reed, uh, running back Kyron Williams, James Connor. So I am pretty heavy on the Arizona Cardinals, but I think that's all right because they are going to bounce back this year for offensively. Zach Moss, uh, Blake Corum, and Kendra Miller. Then I have the doctor as I break glass in case of emergency at the tight end position and Jalen Hurts. All right. Weigh in on YouTube if you're watching over there in the comments. Let us know what you think of these teams and how badly we screwed up, which I, I, I think you'll let us know. You always let us know. And uh, don't forget you can import your mock drafts into the Draft Analyzer right now on ultimatedraftkit.com over at ultimatedraftkit.com. Next week we're going to be getting divisional. And don't forget we got a Saturday show this week as well. So have a safe, enjoyable, wonderful 4th of July holiday on Thursday and we'll catch you on our Saturday episode of the show that's it goodbye farewell adios see you later sayonara goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.